Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to read and write files in Python. So it's really common to want to save data across the times that you're running your script. Um, and we do that by writing data to the hard drive. Um, so to write data to the hard drive, we normally open up either a file or some type of database. And today we're going to be talking about the uh, how to deal with files. So uh, opening files is relatively simple. We need to create uh, something called a file handle first. Um, so the file handle can be named whatever you want. I'm just going to call the file handle uh, fh. And then just like setting up a, a normal variable, we have our variable name. And my variable name here is fh equals. And then we want to uh, open up a file. Okay, so I'm going to type open. And it's a function that's built into Python. You can see that it turned blue. Uh, which means it was detected as a Python function. And then I need to give this function a name of the file that I want to create. So I'm just going to call it test.text and then um, uh, an attribute about uh, describing how I want to open the file. So what do I want to do with the file once I open it? Um, and you basically have three options. You can either um, you can either uh, read, so r equals read, uh, w equals write, or a uh, equals append, uh, also for a type of writing. There's also, um, uh, what was it, r plus, sorry, r plus, which is kind of uh, read and write. Okay, but what we're going to talk about today are the first three, because they should um, pretty much get you uh, as far as you want to go. So the first thing I want to do is actually create this file test.txt, which means I need to open the file handle as a uh, write. So I need to write to the file. Uh, down below in my terminal, if I look in the directory, um, right now I just have a bunch of Python files. I don't have anything called test.txt. So we're going to create this file and then write something to it. So since I'm writing, I need to use the w um, uh, uh, attribute um, or argument to uh, specify that I want to write data to the uh, file. So I'm just going to save that and then just so you can see what a file handle uh, looks like without writing anything to the file yet, I'm just going to open up the file, I'm just opening up the file and then I'm going to print the contents of fh and that will print um, basically a description of the file handle. So let's go ahead and save that and then run it. Okay, so I'm going to run my uh, Python script using Python and uh, we see this IO, um, which is input output and then text IO wrapper and we have an argument named test.txt the mode is W for write, and the encoding is UTF-8, uh, which is my default encoding. Okay, so now if I look in the directory, you can see that I have test.txt created. Um, if I try to look inside that, uh, you can see nothing printed out, which means test.txt is empty. So that's right. Um, we opened up the file in write mode, so that created the file on the disk in the same directory as the script that I'm running it in. You can specify where you want to create it. Um, I created it in the same directory. Uh, so now we have our empty text file, and we didn't write anything to the file, we just printed the file handle. So uh, that means that the text file is empty. Okay, And that's pretty much all there is to uh, creating a file, but we want to do more than just create a file. Normally we want to write something to the file. Okay, so um, as you can imagine, we already have this file handle uh, fh, and we're going to be using the file handle basically every time we want to read or write uh, something, well, in this case, write, because that's how we opened it. So I need to do fh, and if I want to write something, I do dot write, so fh period write, and then the text that you want to write to the file. So I'm going to say uh, uh, this is a first line. Okay, um, and I want to write three lines to this file, so I'm going to go ahead and do just copy 
copy and paste that. I'll move this out of the way. Okay, so now we've opened up the test.txt file in write mode, and then I'm going to write um, three lines to the file. Um, and then that's it. And what I need to do once I'm done doing that is uh, it's good practice to close the file. Now the script will close um, once the script is, is finished running and we get to the end of the script, then the script itself will exit and then eventually the files or the operating system will close the file handle. But um, once you're done with the file handle, it's good practice to just close it as soon as you're done uh, anyway. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and run this. So you can see that nothing happened. We have our test.txt file. Um, and then if I cat or if I show the contents of test.txt, we now have one single line that says this is the first line, this is the second line, this is the third line. So what's going on here? Why is it only um, uh, showing up in one line? And the reason for that is uh, new line is a character. Uh, it's a character that basically um, whenever you render something in a text viewer, the new line character isn't shown, but it tells the computer to separate these two things and then move this this to an, the next line. So that new line character um, is slash in. So I need to uh, include slash in if I want this to be on one um, line by itself and then the next line be on a different line. So let's do two slash ins. Let's run the script again and then see what the results are. So now I put a slash in which is a new line character. So this is the first line and then there's actually uh, an invisible character at the end here and that's the new line character that says okay now we're here go to the next line. So then we have the next line uh, we have our new line character and then we have the third line and I did not add a new line character to the third line so you can see that this uh, command prompt is on the same line because it doesn't is it isn't forced to the next line so um, just a reminder uh, you do have uh, kind of these control characters these invisible characters uh, in text files that you will need to add yourself if you want to, them to um, show up like you expect okay Right, okay, so now we have um, opened a file, test.txt, for writing, and then we've written three lines, and then um, let's run it again, cat, and then we have each line on its own individual line because we added this uh, new line control character. Once we wrote everything to the file, um, this external test.txt file, uh, I'll just open it up in uh, notepad to show you. So uh, just like you would expect in Notepad, we have three lines on uh, three separate lines. Okay, so it's a normal text file separate from your Python script. Okay, so this is a different file from your Python script. So you can save whatever you want inside that um, file. Uh, there's basically two types of files. We are dealing with a uh, text file and then Python also supports binary files and binary files are a little bit more advanced so I'll leave that for later. Um, text files while you're practicing should get you uh, uh, pretty far. Okay, okay. so now we have our file that's been opened um, and we can write to it. Well, writing is fine but eventually you're going to want to read something from the file. Okay, um, so as you would expect uh, I'm going to change the file handle name to I don't know, uh, read file handle. Remember, this is a variable name, so you can name this whatever you want. Okay, so read file handle um, equals, and then I'm gonna use open again. So open here, uh, we want to open test.txt for reading. Okay, so I need to open test.txt, and then instead of the W for write, I need to use R for read. Um, and then now we have this RFH, this is the read file handle. Uh, I could have called it even FH again, no problem. And to read something, we can just do uh, RFH dot 
And can you guess what it is? <laughs> Just like write, um, we're doing read, and read is its own function. So rfh dot read. So this is the file handle we've set up, open for reading with the R. And then once we have the file handle created, then we can do dot read, and then it will read the file. Okay. So now let's go ahead and run that. And you notice before, whenever I ran the script, um, it did not print anything on the screen. It just wrote uh, text to this text file. Now I'm reading from the text file um, and printing everything on the screen as I read it using the read command. Now read will just read everything, uh, but we can specify exactly what we want to read. Okay. Now that I already have this test.text test created, I'm gonna go ahead and move the write data just to clear up this screen a little bit. Okay, so read reads everything in the file. And sometimes we want to read everything in the file um, and uh, put that into a variable or start to do something with it. Um, but we might want to read, for example, just individual um, uh, characters. So let's say we know we want to read only 10 characters from uh, this file. Okay, if we know, for example, what text we want to read, we know it's exactly five characters long, and we could, uh, for example, read the first 10 characters. Okay, and then this is A. If I did five, oops, then I just get this and a, and a space. Right? If I did seven, okay. Now, um, imagine that I am reading seven, and whenever we're reading, uh, every time you read, uh, it moves a uh, pointer along the file handle. So once we read these, these first seven characters, um, the pointer doesn't go back to the beginning, it actually kind of stays. So let's say we read uh, these first characters, now the pointer would be at in, and then if we read again, it would start at this uh, bracket. Okay, so what we'd get here, um, uh, let's just run this and, and show you what happens. So this is, uh, I read the first seven characters, and then I read, read the next three characters, and then maybe just to illustrate a little bit more, and then read the next ten characters. Okay, this is, and then uh, that was the first seven characters, the next three characters, and then the next 10 characters. So as you read, um, whatever you read, the pointer is gonna stay at the last point that you read. It could be a line or it could be individual characters. And then the next time that you call read, the pointer is gonna go from the next location, okay? So um, as long as you have this file handle open, it will remember where you've, what you've read so far and then uh, uh, kind of hold your place at that point for the next time that you read. So just be aware of that. It doesn't reset every time you do a read. Uh, it doesn't go back to the beginning. It'll just stay where you left off, okay? Uh, that's true for just read, which is giving me characters here. Uh, this is also true for, um, let's say I don't know how long a line is gonna be. In my case, I don't know how long uh, my individual lines are in the file. So let's do cat text test. So for example, these lines are different lengths. So let's say that I wanted this entire line, but I don't know how long this line is. Well, instead of read, and that would read everything, or at least the characters that I um, specify, I can use read line, okay? Which is really common to do if you have a text file, you want to read the line instead of reading everything. Okay, so let's read files. And then I read line and I get, this is a first line, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, can I put something, um, uh, can I put a number in here and then read uh, line number 10? It doesn't quite work that way. So this is still reading the first line, but it's gonna give you the first 10 characters from that line, okay? Now, um, yeah, okay. So, uh, just like before, let's say I read line, I can get the first line, and then if I read the line again, uh, what do you think will happen? Will it go back to the first line, or will we go to the second line? This is the first line, this is the second line, okay? And it's doing two reads, um, and basically it's adding this new line in between. 
Okay. Um, now, if I wanted to read all lines, then I can do read lines uh, in plural. So I just add an S to that and it will read multiple lines for me. Okay. Now, what is the difference between um, just read, which gave me all of the lines, and read lines? Well, whenever I do read lines, this is returning not individual lines, but what is this? The square bracket should tell you what it is. It is an array, right? This is a list of lines. And you can even see that the um, uh, control characters are also shown. So by reading lines, I get an array of all of the lines in the file, okay? If I just did read, it will print all of the lines in the file, okay? But it, uh, it will render the control characters um, and yeah, I, get, I don't get an array. I just get the lines directly, okay? So read lines will give me back an array. Now you might be thinking, well, why the heck would I want um, an array? Uh, read lines. Why would I want an array? Well, if you have the array of all of the aligned uh, lines, first off, you can see what con control characters they're using very easily. Second, you can loop over the arrays like we've talked about. So before we were talking about loops and we were looping over um, uh, an array and this would be an array that we could also loop over and do something with each line or check each line for, um, for example, the keyword second and then do something if it's the second keyword. Okay, So uh, having something in an array format is very easy to work with. If you want an array with all the control characters, uh, use read lines. If you just want all of the data from the file, just use read. And then if you only want one line at a time, use read line. And then remember that um, every time you read, it's going to um, uh, uh, hold your pointer for you. So I'm gonna read one line and the next time I call read line, it'll print the second line. The next time it'll print the third line, okay? So uh, just as an example, um, let's go ahead and run through uh, a file using a for loop. So it's pretty common, if, especially if you have a text file, um, let's say that you have uh, data that you want to access on each line, and then you want to understand what's on that line and do something with it using an if statement. You want to check something about the text, okay? So what we can do is open the file uh, test.txt, uh, read, right, with the R, and then I can use a for loop, so a for loop is four, and then instead of doing, um, uh, uh, yeah, instead of doing it the old way that we showed, we can do for line in uh, RFH, okay? Now what this does is it takes, um, uh, it does basically read line, it takes one line from the file handle, and then assigns that line to um, a variable here I'm calling line. I could have called this anything. It can be L, it can be test, it can be hello, like whatever I wanna call this, but I usually call it what it is. So I'm taking one line from uh, RFH, which is the test.text handle, and then I'm putting that line into the variable named line, okay? So for line in RFH, and then I can just do print line. Now what should happen here? Well, we're getting the line and then we're just printing it. So we should get something very similar to what's output uh, whenever you do all of the read lines, okay? And it is exactly the same. So you might be thinking, well, why would I use this instead of read lines? Well, read lines is just returning everything um, at, the same, at the same time. So you have one read, Read lines is returning an array of everything. If you just do read, you're returning everything at the same time, and you can't really do anything with the individual lines. If you do read line, you have to call read line over and over and over again manually. This is kind of an automated way to call read line over and over again. What you can get from that um, is, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Um, let's say that I wanted to count the, uh, the length of each line. So 
So I want to know how long is each line uh, in this file. I don't know why I would want to know that, but let's say I wanted to know it. Um, because I have the individual line, now I can do something like length of line. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. So we have our line and then it counts 21. We have our second line, it counts 22. We have our third line and it counts 21. Okay, well now that we know the, the length of each of the lines, let's do an if statement. So if line, uh, no, if length of the line is um, equal to 21, print, uh, uh, I don't know, <laughs> cool guy. Okay, and then else print. Oh no. Okay, so what should happen here? Um, we're going through. We're reading an individual line from the file handle. So our read file handle is test.txt. Um, we're taking the line from RFH, putting it into the variable called line. And again, I can name this whatever I want. And then I'm testing line using an if statement. So if the length of line, the number of characters in line is equal, oops, I need to do a double equal sign, is equal, because I'm testing, to 21, then print cool guy, else print oh no. Okay, so can you guess what would happen here? We have one line that's 21, one that's 22, one that's 21. So what we should get out whenever I run this script is cool guy should print, and then oh no should print, and then cool guy should print. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that, and that's exactly what we get. Okay, so the whole point of using a for loop over these lines, instead of reading everything at one time, uh, which you might want to do if you're just printing something, but if you actually want to test each line, then um, it's better to use a for loop over each line. Of course, it depends on the data you have and, and what your goal is, um, but very often we use loops and then loop over each line and then decide to do something uh, with that particular line. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, uh, opening files, read and write, uh, writing to a file, closing the file. Um, uh, I keep opening. I need to also uh, do a close here. So RFH equal uh, dot close. Don't forget your closes like I just forgot my close, okay? Um, right, so we want to close our files whenever we're done with it. Um, and then uh, we can read, we can use read line, we can use read lines, and we can also loop over individual lines uh, to get some data out of it. So we're able to save data to the hard drive uh, in test.txt, a separate file from your script. And we're also able to read back out of it. Now overall, what's this for? Well, if you're running your script, uh, whenever the script exits, everything you were doing is essentially lost. The script doesn't remember things every time you run it. So you need to save anything you want to remember into a file or into a database. And that's what this is for. So now whenever you're running your script, you can ask the user for their name, and then you can save that name into a file. The next time you run your script, you can load that name from the file and then use it while they're running the script and you don't have to ask them for it again, for example, okay? Um, so that's it for writing files and reading files from the disk. Thank you very much.